Yes, order, order. Please, please read us paragraph 10. Your Lordship, I would wish to say that most respectively, I wish to say no more in respect to the paragraph. <laughs> this, this, this is a direction from court. Read paragraph 10 and paragraph 16. Read paragraph 16. Read paragraph 10 first. May I have some peace, Your Lordship? No. I, I, listen, 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 please. Please, 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 please listen. Your Lordship. Listen, listen. Who is in conduct? Listen. Yes, Sir, you have applied to expunge yes, Sir, paragraphs Sir. 10 and the paragraph 16. Yes, Sir, Sir. Can you read those paragraphs which you intend to expunge? Your Lordship, paragraph 16 says that... Paragraph 10. Your Lordship, may I take... Note that these paragraphs have been expunged. No, <laughs> we have not expunged those paragraphs. It, it is your application. Them. <laughs> the petitioners have credible information that Honorable uh, Murima is a close associate to the proposed deputy president, one Mr. Kidore Kindiki and that the said judge failed, refused, or neglected to disclose those facts to the parties at the inception. The basis of the application to expunge that particular paragraph is on the basis that the same has been linked to the affidavit sworn in petition 015. Paragraph 16, that Lady Justice Mugambi is conflicted as she should, uh, as she should excuse herself as she was uh, Mr. Kedora Kindiki's LLM student at Moy University. We have no LLM program at Moy University. Professor you Kinder, will have please, your please. time to submit, please. sir. Let me, let me Stop itching. And that's why I'm expanding it. That's why I'm expanding this paragraph. That is what my client said. A crucial issue that, the, that she failed and or refused to disclose to the parties. My client has learned that she was not an LLM there and that she only took her degree in that university. We have no objection to anything being expunged subject to the court observing that if this witness has lied about these two issues, what else has he lied about? I, uh, in, a, in a ruling, because application has been made and the response is there, but we decline the invitation to expand those paragraphs. They will remain as part of the record. Dr. Kamuna, we would appreciate uh, if you want to address us in the course of the, as, as, in, as, in, as in your submitting. Is that, is that the position? Yes, absolutely. Okay, proceed. Um, are you supporting the motion? I'm supporting my friends. 
Thank you very much uh, to my senior, my lords. Um, I'll take about 15 minutes. Uh, mercifully, uh, my issues are issues of law. They will not uh, incite uh, any shooting up from a uh, respondent, or should not. My lords, I have, my lords and uh, your ladyship, I have submitted some um, two uh, cases. The first case is the case of Standard Chartered Financial Services and another versus Manchester Outfitters. I don't know that you have that with you. And the second is a case called Naveen Premji Kerai versus Virunga Limited and others. In the case of Standard Chartered Financial Services Limited versus Manchester Outfitters, and this remains, as far as I'm aware, the first case where the Court of Appeal reviewed a judgment, a concluded judgment, set it aside and varied it. And the only question before that court that uh, led it to this decision was the question of bias. Uh, I invite your, my lords and your ladyship uh, to paragraph one of the decision where the court says as follows in trying to frame the seriousness of the issue. And I'm reading from the second line. It is a rare application in which the applicants seek to have the judgment of this court reopened, re-examined, declared a nullity, set aside, and the appeal 